Welcome to Two Five of Books. My name is Janelle, and this is another March Mystery Madness video. A while ago, I posted a video. It was a library book haul, and in that video, in the comment section, Annika from Inking Your Thinking requested that I do an art crimes mysteries video where I would recommend some mysteries that involved art crime and I thought that was a great idea and I wrote it down and then I forgot about it. So I thought March Mystery Madness, this is the perfect time to do this video. Now my guess is that I probably had talked about this series and that's what got her thinking about it. This is my favorite art crime mystery series. This is the um, Art Theft Squad series by Ian Pears. It is set in Rome, which is fantastic. And it has character people who work in the Art Theft Squad, as well as an English person named Jonathan, who is an art student, an art restorer. Um, he also plays a big role in the stories. There are seven books in the series. The first one is The Raphael Affair from 1990. This one is Death and Restoration. Like I said, I really love this series. There's often, you know, they each book has something about art, forgery, theft, whatever. And yeah, so it's a really good uh, series and I, I love that it's set in Rome. Okay, so then I started doing some investigating what else was out there for art crime. And I discovered the Tim Lacey Art World series by Derek Wilson. Tim Lacey is a security expert investigating crime and fraud in the international art world. There are six books, they're from the 90s. The first is The Triarchs from 1994. Now, I was not able to get a hold of any of these books. My library didn't have any, but it, they did look interesting and they would definitely fit in this category of art crime. I did find, however, another series by the same author. He's, he's writing as D.K. Wilson. He wrote three historical mysteries featuring unsolved crime in the Tudor era. So already I was fascinated, fascinated. I thought this doesn't have anything to do with art crime or art theft, but uns featuring real unsolved crimes from the Tudor era, this sounded so interesting to me. Um, and our library had one or two of them and they had this one, which is the second one called The Traitor's Mark. And it's based on the true story of the unsolved disappearance of Hans Holbein the famed portrait painter of Henry VIII. So I, I, I think that you can make an argument that this one would count for, for this recommendation video. And I just think that this concept is amazing. So according to Alison Weir, if you like Shard Lake, you will love this exciting new series. Uh, 1543 in Tudor England, Deception is an art. The real crime, Hans Holbein, King Henry VIII's favorite portrait painter, died in the autumn of 1543. A century later, a chronicler reported that the artist had succumbed to plague, yet there is no contemporary evidence to support this. Suspicions have been raised over the centuries, but the truth behind what actually happened remains a mystery. Our story. <clears throat> Young London goldsmith Thomas Treviot is awaiting a design for a very important jewelry commission from Hans Holbein. When the design fails to turn up, Thomas sends a servant to track Holbein down, only to discover that the painter has disappeared without trace. In his hunt for Holbein and the lost design, Thomas is led into a morass of dangerous political intrigue, Spanish spies, and courtiers that is more treacherous than he could ever have anticipated. That sounds fascinating and I'm actually gonna keep this and read it myself because that just sounds so interesting. Okay, moving on. I found another series, it's called The Art Lover's Mysteries by Haley Lind. 
Annie Kincaid is a reformed art forger now in the faux finishing business. It's a cozy series. There are four books and the first is Faint of Art from 2006. This is a later one in the series called Arsenic and Old Paint. Uh, I never said where these ones are set. These ones are set in the United States, but I don't know specifically where. So there you go. If you're looking for a series on the more cozy side, you might want to check that one out. Okay, and then there is the Canaletto series by Janet Lawrence. There are three books, the first being Canaletto and the Case of Westminster Bridge from 1997. In this series, the painter slash artist is the detective and they're set in the mid 1700s. So yeah, I love a good historical mystery. This one I actually own, this one my parents gave this one to me a few years ago and I would love to get to it very soon. Um, yeah, it says right on the bottom, famous painter Canaletto plays detective in 18th century London. Okay, next up we have Ga the Gabriel Allen series by Daniel Silva. Now, not the entire series. I couldn't guarantee that the entire series um, has books that are related to art crime, but the English assassin definitely does. Gabriel Allen is a world-class art restorer and a for former member of the Israeli Secret Service. The English assassin, uh, I'm not sure where it stands in the series. It came out in 2002. And in this one, he arrives in Zurich to clean the art of an old master for a millionaire banker only to find himself standing in his client's blood and framed for the murder. I do know that there are a number in this series that would count. Here's another one, The Rembrandt Affair from 2010. Gabriel Allen has retreated to the windswept cliffs of Cornwall. And his seclusion is interrupted by an eccentric, eccentric London art dealer with a problem. An art restorer has been brutally murdered and a portrait by Rembrandt stolen and only Gabriel can find it. Uh, so there you go. So there's going to be a number in that series that are specifically related to art crime, but I can't guarantee that the whole series will be. Next up, this one is a favorite of mine. This is A Virgin on the Rocks by Michael Butterworth. This was published in 1985. And it's got the subtitle, Variations on a Theme in the Black Manor. This one was fantastic. Paris, 1933. Aspiring novelist Bernard Fosdyke arrives from Berlin having blown his inheritance in the German capital. Almost immediately, he is caught up in a wild and daring plan devised by his rescuer, master art forger, Harold Hiram Levy. A criminal scheme to be sure, but Bernard is willing to do anything for the fortune Levy promises. With the unwitting assistance of Ernest Hemingway and other artistic heroes of the 30s, Levy and Fosdyke put into motion their audacious plan, exchange one of the Louvre's da Vinci masterpieces for a Hal Levy copy of the same. Yeah, pretty fantastic. Okay, then we have False Impression by Jeffrey Archer. This is from 2006. The theft of a priceless Van Gogh ignites a chase across the globe. So definitely art crime. Why was the elegant lady brutally murdered the night before 9-11? Why was a successful New York banker not surprised to receive a woman's left ear in the mail? Why did a young woman with a brilliant career steal an Impressionist painting? Why was an honors graduate working as a temporary secretary after inheriting a fortune? Why was a senior FBI agent trying to work out the connection between these apparently innocent individuals? False Impressions by Jeffrey Archer. Another one by Jeffrey Archer is the first in his William Warwick series. 
The first is Nothing Ventured from 2019. In this one, William Warwick works for Scotland's, Scotland Yard's Art and Antiquities Unit. Now, what's interesting here is there are six in the series, but this is the only one with the arts, Art and Antiquities Unit. In the other books in the series, he actually works for different departments. So if you want specifically art crime, you want this first one, Nothing Ventured. <clears throat> okay, and then we have The Art Thief by Noah Charney. This one I don't know anything about except that it is art crime. Let's see, Rome. In a small Baroque church of Santa Giana, a magnificent Caravaggio altarpiece disappears without a trace in the middle of the night. Paris. In the basement vault of the Malevich Society, curator Genevieve de la Cloche is shocked to discover the disappearance of the society's greatest treasure, white on white, by supremacist painter Kaz Casimir Malevich. London. At the, London, at the National Gallery of Modern Art, the museum's latest acquisition is stolen just hours after it was purchased for more than six million pounds. Full of fascinating art historical detail, crackling dialogue, and a brain-teasing plot, this debut novel is a sophisticated, stylish thriller, as irresistible and multifaceted as a great work of art. So if that sounds up your alley, you might want to try that one. We have a standalone from Ian Rankin called Doors Open. This is from 2008. Three friends descend upon an art auction in search of some excitement. Mike, retired software mogul, software mogul, bachelor and fine art enthusiast, wants something that money can't buy. Fellow art lover Alan is bored with his banking career and burdened by a divorce. Robert, an art professor, is frustrated that so many paintings stay hidden in corporate boardrooms. After the auction, and after a chance encounter with a notorious crime boss, Robert and Alan propose the liberation of several paintings from the National Gallery, hoping Mike will dissuade them. Instead, he hopes they are serious. Yeah, that one sounds really good. I haven't read this one yet, um, but yeah, it sounds pretty good. And now uh, you might be surprised to find a Spencer novel on this list, um, Painted Ladies by Robert B. Parker. This is the second video that I've done this month where there is a surprise Spencer book on the list. The first one was in my Biblio Mysteries because the very first Spencer was a Biblio Mystery. This one is a art crime mystery. This is from 2010. Spencer's Job, protect art scholar Dr. Ashton Prince during a ransom exchange for a stolen painting. Symbol, no one was supposed to die. Then again, Prince had secrets no one knew. Uncovering them is endangering Spencer as well. Very fun. Okay, and then one more is The Vanishing Man by Charles Finch. This is one of his prequel. He did a trilogy of prequels to the Charles Lennox um, <clears throat> series. This one is from 2019. It is set in London in 1853. Having earned some renown by solving a case that baffled Scotland Yard, young Charles Lennox is called upon by the Duke of Dorset, one of England's most revered noblemen, for help. A painting of the Duke's great-grandfather has been stolen from his private study. But the Duke's concern is not for his ancestor's portrait. Hiding in plain sight nearby is another painting of infinitely more value, one that holds the key to one of the country's most famous and best kept secrets. And I'm, I'll leave it at that. But there you have it, a, another historical mystery about art crime. Okay, there you have it. That's my list. I tried to keep it relatively short, but it was fun 
kind of doing some research into what was out there for art crime. Let me know if you know of a good mystery that is in that world of art crime in the comment section down below. I would love to know about more because I'm sure that there's more. I'm sure that I did not at all come anywhere near close to covering all of them. Let me know if you've read any of these and what you thought about them. And I will see you for another video soon. Bye.